Hi guys, my name is Roger, and I'm building a mid-engine supercar in the basement of my home. Let's take a look at what I've been working on this week. All right, so I have pulled everything out that I need to. I, I thought I'd need to take these uh, pedals and steering column out, but I don't just yet, I will eventually. I've uh, removed this uh, HVAC box here and all the vent lines basically on top, which were just sitting there. They weren't bolted on yet. And that lets me access this area of the firewall here, which is what I need. I need a real accurate measurement of how the uh, firewall is going to be shaped come around and touch this and I've modeled something made a template and held it up to see how it fits and it's really close one end you can see I need to adjust um, 25,000 so it was that close one end is just a little bit long but when I held my template up here and touched the front of the frame I could see that this side over here was 25 thousandths long so I'll tweak that in my file and once I do that, then I can see and see that part. As for the rest of the template, I'm getting ready to start making the mold for the uh, front firewall. And uh, most of this will be handmade, hand cut. There's a lot of angles, so it's going to be complicated figuring all the angles and cuts to make this. But I think it is much more simple to do it by hand and try to see and see this entire thing in pieces. Now the box that goes around this area here in this cutout will be CNC'd just because of the complexity of it and attached to this mold once I uh, make it. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and film making this mold. I'll get the camera set up here with a time lapse video and uh, we'll get started making some cuts and making this mold.
Well, that is uh, the majority of the mold. That's probably two thirds of the work. I still need to glue these two small pieces here in the corners and screw them in. But before I glue them and they become permanent, I want to make sure I don't need to take this mold back apart anywhere on that end. I'm pretty sure I'll take it back apart on the, the end that's sitting on the floor. I need to CNC a pocket that's going to go in here. This is where the uh, recess for the HVAC will be. And since it's such a uh, an odd shape or contour, I don't think I can make that on the saw. It's just too much work. I will CNC a piece that has that pocket in it, and then I will cut into this area here. It goes all the way up against the surface and somewhere near the center. But I'll cut an opening and sink that pocket into it and glue it in and fasten it, secure it somehow. I'm not quite sure yet, but I need to make it on the CNC first, and then we'll figure out how to mount it. But that is the mold, or the majority of it. You can see it needs a, a lot of finishing to be ready. I have to epoxy over all the screw heads, and then I have to brush a coat of wood glue. I take wood glue and thin it down with water just enough to where I can brush it on consistently. And I let that dry, and once that wood glue soaks into this MDF and dries, it's easy to sand and makes a pretty good finish. And once I do that, I can put some high build primer and some putty on it around all the edges and corners and uh, a couple of coats of uh, primer and sanding and it'll be smooth enough to use for a mold. So I guess I'm going to stop here for now on this and uh, next thing we'll do is uh, get on the computer and get this pocket ready and uh, go make the pocket on the CNC machine. Well, here's the finished firewall mold and you can see that I uh, machined the pocket and put it in the mold and I have been uh, puttying and sanding and priming and getting this mold ready and uh, I have three coats of wax on it so far. See the wax can sitting in the floor here. I'm going to apply the last three coats of wax tonight and then tomorrow we'll try to make a part. Uh, see if we can get a nice part off of this mold, but you can see the pocket here that I machined on the CNC machine and inserted it. It's just about three quarters of an inch wide here and it is flushed all the way around and glued in and then puttied and primed and sanded and filled in until it looks nice. But this is what the mold looks like finished. I won't film the process of laying up the mold or a vacuum infusion process tomorrow making the part. You've seen that a couple of times in the last few videos, but I will come back and show you once I have the part finished and we'll see what it turns out like. Well, I had my first part failure. I uh, worked on this part all day long yesterday, about uh, maybe 12 hours. and. In the end, I couldn't get the part to completely infuse. I think you can see the line going across. It's kind of a shadow in here. But this is as high as the epoxy got before it started hardening, and the infusion process just took too long. I'm not quite sure what was wrong. I, uh, I think I had a vacuum leak, uh, although I had fairly good suction. It wasn't as good as normal. It was down just a little bit but I could never find a leak. I couldn't hear one and I tried um, some extra gum tape in a couple of spots I thought might be leaking in the corners, but uh, just did not improve. Um, the uh, Not quite sure what happened. It could have been a couple of different things. I laid this mold up a little differently. My resins had been uh, sitting in the cold and it kind of gelled up and I heated them up to get them to look normal, which you're supposed to do. But uh, in the end, we had a part failure and um, not quite sure what to do about this. I, um, I don't have a lot of experience making these uh, parts, just started doing them on this car. So I've made four or five parts so far. But I do have a question. For anyone out there that has experience making carbon fiber parts, is there any way for me to flip this mold upside down, re-vacuum bag it, and do the inlet here on this area and maybe a vacuum on both ends? Can I infuse the void area in this mold 
and will it fill in and bond to the already hardened epoxy and make this mold sufficient. It's not a structural element, it's just a wall, a firewall that bolts to the aluminum frame. So the aluminum frame creates the structure. Um, <clears throat> it's more just a visual part. So if anyone out there can answer that question, I'd be interested to know the answer. Will it? Can I infuse the other side of this and will it bond and be sufficient for a uh, non-structural part? Um, I may try that if someone says it's, it might be possible just to see if it'll finish infusing this part and salvage it. If not, I'll have to strip everything off this mold and try again. But uh, I'd like to know the answer to that. Someone can comment below and just let me know your experience. Uh, anyone ever tried that or any thoughts on that? I would really appreciate it. But it took me two weeks to make this mold and pull this part. And uh, that's what you've seen here in this video is two weeks of work. And I guess that's going to be about it for this week's video. And until I find out what I can do to salvage this part or remake this part, I'm going to let it sit for a few days. And in the meantime, I have some other things to work on in the car. But um, that's going to be it for this week's video. And I'll see you guys again in a week or two.